Stephen Reid from Michelle Wall. Great to have you with us again on Flow. My pleasure, Ricky. Uh, let's have a chat about the wool markets first. There's some excitement on the processing front as well, but uh, how did things go this week in the auctions? Now, really solid week, actually. Almost 40,000 bales were up, only 10% passed in. Indicator up $0.05. Cents. Merinos were up, crossbreds were up, cardings were up. Um, it's 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 a pretty good week actually. Currency's down both in in euro and the US dollar, so we're heading into Christmas with uh, with the wind in our sails, to use that term. Well, that's a, that's a positive set of news. And uh, what, how's the market demand looking if things chill up, chill down in the European area? Are we getting increasing demand that's driving that positivity? Absolutely. Some of the sales into Italy are outstanding. And, and you know, whilst it's only 25 to 3% of our exports currently, uh, they're up 257% compared wow. to this time last year. India's up. Um, the other parts of Europe, UK, are up as well. So um, exports of all of our wool is up 5.2%, 5.3%. So uh, now all the statistics are looking positive. There's more diversification going on. And... Um, yeah, it's 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 a it's a very good story actually. Nice way to end the week. Yeah, we'll talk about diversification on the processing side in a moment. But uh, one of those diversities, I guess, is that non mulesed wool. Is that do, still doing that sort of premium pricing that you mentioned previously? Yeah, monster premiums. And uh, you know, whilst there's a few different uh, use that term blockchain technologies in terms of certification for sustainability and animal welfare. Um, there's some monster premiums out there, and a lot of that wool's being sold outside the auction system. So it's pretty hard to work out what premiums are being paid. But uh, we've certainly seen, as I think we alluded to last week, you know, prices between three dollars, three dollars fifty premium for for wool that's non mules. Uh, the, the farm has a sustainability, which is not just about animal welfare; it's broader than that. Um, traceability and and prepared to put their brand against uh, the retail product. So. Um, some, some interesting stuff there for, for growers that can get involved in that. And, of course, it doesn't suit all breeds of sheep, not all environments and not all climates, but for, uh, for, for growers to sit back and have a jolly good look at it, it there's money to be made. I guess it's a variant of that old adage, the customer is always right. If the premiums are there, it's worth looking into. That's right, Ricky. But at the end of the day, uh, most growers have got to look after the welfare of their sheep. And, and if that involves mulesing, uh, and done with pain relief, that's critical. Um, it, it, we, we can't have sheep falling over with fly strike. That's, that's not good enough. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, just uh, before we look at the um, processing as well, the, the auctions this next coming week, what have we got listed this week? 41,000 bales up. Um, currency's down. We're, we're at 70.26 against the US at the moment, which is which is pretty low uh, on a historical basis. 62.76 on the euro. So, uh, I'm expecting a pretty solid week next week. Uh, I, I suspect clearance will be low and uh, growers will be cashing in and then spending their uh, their sales on Santa Claus presents. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, now we're looking on the processing side, this federal government grant to explore, I guess, diversifying processing. Uh, it seemed to me we kissed textile processing goodbye in Australia and it was always going to go and stay in China. Is maybe not going in that direction? I, I, I think that, um, and, and I speak, I guess, with, with a bit of knowledge, we run, Michelle run a factory here in Adelaide and we run one in China, which we own 100%. So now we've straddled the fence for, for, for probably 15 years. Um, but that uh, that exposure to China needs to get, uh, to use the word, more diversification. We, we're far too exposed, particularly for early stage processing, to, to one region. And it's not it's it's not a sovereign risk issue necessarily. It's all about more competition. So uh, it's fantastic for uh, the Minister Little Proud to, to step up and say, look, let's let's do some feasibility work in terms of both um, re-establishing onshore processing in Australia, but also working with our customers outside of China um, to to expand their their early stage processing, and and a lot of that expansion could well be with Chinese interests as as costs go up in China, and we're seeing it. Um, you know, some of those Chinese plants might want to diversify with their processing as well. So very exciting for for Michelle Wool to be involved with wool producers in particular who ran the project for us, um, and you know we've we've teamed up with them and. Uh, looking forward to, to, to seeing some of those developments. Now, I guess without giving away any trade secrets, would there be any obvious candidates within our local region for where such a processing facility could get up and running? Oh, we, we, we've had plants in Australia. Um, you know, you've got to consider uh, the location for, for logistics, um, water in, water out. 
um, uh, all sorts of things have to be considered. But um, yeah, there's all sorts of people that put their hand up, which is fantastic. And, and more people that are interested, the better. Um, from a Michelle point of view, we've got a big facility here at Salisbury. Um, we, we think we can scale up very, very quickly. And uh, uh, the Michelle family is 100% behind this. So it's, it's quite exciting times. The, the big trick, I guess, Ricky, is um, a lot of what's going on in terms of processing in China is using 25-, 30-year-old technology. They were picked up out of Australia, those plants, out of Europe, out of, uh, out of the, the Americas, out of the Far East, Japan, Korea, Taiwan. Um, so if, if we're going to do it, an expansion, uh, we might want to, uh, I, I guess, get our head around a bit of innovation and uh, talk about doing it with modern processing technologies. Yeah, I guess that's it. that's the thing, isn't it? Um, cheaper labour is always a short-term competitive advantage. The long term is continuing to innovate. Well, exactly right. And uh, you know, getting labour here, you know, we we're interviewing people left, right, and centre to get ourselves back to twenty four seven, and it's difficult to to get people to come in and and and, and work in you know, what is relatively. Uh, manufacturing environment, and um, I'm not sure if you've got children, but I certainly have four of them. Uh, they, they're looking for jobs that are, are more about technology, uh, more about innovation, uh, more about robotics. They, they're not necessarily want to be walking around um, in a big pair of boots getting covered in steam and, and muck all day. So we need to think deeply about the sort of processing we want to do. And, and from, a, from a country's point of view, you know, getting CSIRO involved and the universities involved in terms of modern manufacturing for early stage processing of, of wool, it, it actually excites me a little bit and uh, yeah, it keeps me awake at night with the with the possibilities. Well, in a good way as well, Stephen Reed. Thank you. Well, for... it is a good it is a good way, Ricky. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, the outlook's pretty good. I'm, yeah. I'm excited about it. That's great. So am I. Thank you, Stephen, for joining us today. Much appreciated. Thanks, Ricky. Cheers.